Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we have the exact same problem that we solved on the previous video, but we're going to solve it differently. What we're going to do here is we're going to take the function f of x equals x squared and turn into the function g of y equals the square root of y by simply saying that since y is equal to x squared, therefore x must be equal to the square root of y. So we're going to use this function instead and then the derivative of that function right here is going to be 1 half y to the minus 1 half. When we square that, we get 1 over 4y. So when we plug all that into this equation here, notice instead of using x for the radius, we now we're going to have the square root of y. So this is 2 pi times the radius, but the radius now is going to be expressed in terms of y instead of x. So that's 2 pi times the square root of y for the radius. When we revolve that around the, oh, in this case, around the y-axis, and then of course we multiply that times the the uh, integral that we need to use to find the arc length along the edge and that's going to be the square root of 1 plus g prime of y quantity squared times dy. The answer we got on the last video was the area, the surface area of revolution was 13 over 3 times pi and obviously we should get the same answer when we do it like this. Alright, let's plug everything in. We have area is equal to 2 pi times the integral. Now these are y limits, so y starts at 0 and goes all the way up to the top. Now if, the, if x is equal to the square root of 2, then of course, uh, let's see, y is going to be x squared, so the square root of 2 squared is going to be 2. So in this case the limit is 2, and we integrate from y equals 0 to y equals 2 times the square root of y times the square root of 1 plus g prime of y squared, which is 1 over 4y, times dy. Now at this point, you take a look at that and go, well, really, I don't know how to integrate that, because what's the differential of this, and do I have the proper differential, but try something. How about if we take the square root of y, and we multiply that inside this radical right here? So that means we get a is equal to 2 pi, times the integral from 0 to 2, times the square root of y times 1, that's y, plus y over 4y, that gives me 1 over 4, times dy. And now you read a sigh of relief. You go, oh, that's an easy integral, because if I write it like this, I have a is equal to 2 pi, times the integral from 0 to 2, times the quantity, y plus 1 quarter to the 1 half power, times dy. Then I can say, all right, over here, if I call this my u, then this here is my du. This is the differential of what's inside the radical. All right, and that's easy to integrate. So notice that in this case, if you choose this method to solve the problem, it's a little bit easier than using the previous method, although neither method was particularly hard. So a equals 2 pi times, now we can integrate. So when we integrate this, we get y plus 1 quarter to the 3 halves power divided by the new exponent, 3 halves, and we have to evaluate that from 0 to 2. Remember, these are y limits. Okay, so we end up with a is equal to 2 pi times the inverse of this, which is 2 over 3, times the quantity y plus a quarter to the 3 halves power evaluated from 0 to 2. All right, so this becomes equal to 4 pi over 3, that. And then when I plug in the upper limit, I get 2 plus a quarter. Well, 2, that would be 4 fourths plus 1 fourth, which is 9 fourths. So that gives me 9 over 4 to the 3 halves power, minus when I plug in the lower limit, I simply get 1 quarter, 1 quarter to the 3 halves power. So here we have a little bit of arithmetic to do, we need to be careful. So you see here that 9 is a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square, so we can take the square root of this, so that gives us 3 over 2, then when we cube it we get 27 over 8. So we can then say that the area here is equal to uh, 4 thirds, 4 pi over 3 times what we say this was, take the square root, 3 halves, cube it, we get 27 over 8. 
minus, here we take the square root, we get 1 over 2, cubed we get 1 over 8. All right, when we simplify that, we get 4 pi over 3 times 27 minus 1, which is 26 over 8. And then we simplify some things. The 4 divided by 4 is 1. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 26 divided by 2 is 13. And so we end up with the area is equal to 13 pi over 3. And notice it's the exact same result that we had over here which means it doesn't matter which way you do the problem, you can solve it both ways. So that's kind of interesting. It does give you a little bit more options. We didn't have that option when we did the arc length calculations, when we did the integrations, we only had one way to do it, either use the x variable or the y variable, but here you can see there's different ways to solve the same problem, either using it as a function of x or as a function of y, and either way you get the exact same answer. And that is how it's done. No, no. <laughs> no, the methodology would be the same. That's exercise for the student to try. No. <laughs>